Yes, people, welcome back to Ben Pearson Fitness and welcome back to Process if you're listening to this on a podcast platform. It's been a while since I've done a podcast. Uh, we've just got back from High Rocks Malaga on Saturday, today's Tuesday, so we're going to be reflecting on my first experience of a solo High Rocks, my first one out there. Uh, it was a really good experience, but obviously we're going to dive into a lot of the things that I've learned from my first High Rocks and a few tips for any anybody who's going into their first High Rocks, whether it be doubles or an individual event. Um, and yeah, we're going to obviously dive into the race to start off with. So how did the race go? Um, not too bad. I did make one massive mistake of doing an extra lap after the row, uh, which is like the, one of the easiest stations. I don't know how I ended up doing an extra lap. Um, I lost concentration for a split second. I started getting a bit of heartburn or something on it, the second or third lap. Started thinking about that too much. But ended up getting to the, to the in bit of the rock zone and then I was like, shit. I don't know how many laps I've done here. I'm pretty sure it's three, but I don't want to get a penalty, so I just decided to do an extra lap. And then I got around the other side, looked at the board, and realised I did four. So that was a little bit annoying. So that added about a minute and a half, two minutes onto my time. Um, but anyway, overall, finished 38 from the Men's Open uh, with a time of one hour, eight minutes and ten seconds. Uh, obviously, I didn't get a penalty, but I did the extra lap, which is a bit annoying. Uh, I came fourth in my age group, which is extra annoying because I could have potentially came maybe with my time Definitely third, maybe second. But you live and you learn. First experience, um, it's one of those things. Can't really blame anybody else but myself. Anyway, moving on to um, the race. Apart from that, how did it go? Um, I think it went well. It was a lot harder than any sort of simulation that I had done at the gym. Uh, way harder. Uh, legs fell a lot heavier. The machines didn't feel too bad. The sleds were a little bit heavier. I would probably say what I expected. I, I heard a lot of things about the sleds being heavier. So when I was training, I was always putting a little bit more weight on the sleds just to get used to it. Um, yeah, just things felt a little bit tougher. The wall balls were by far worse than anything that I've done um, simulation-wise. I was always quite confident with my wall balls, but they felt horrendous, even though it was only six kilograms. Um, I managed to do them unbroken, but there was a few little kind of catch, catch my breath. I need like one or two seconds. So I didn't drop the ball. Um, but yeah, they were a lot harder. Anyway, in terms of my race itself, uh, the good thing about High Rocks is once you do your first race, I don't know if you can see if you're watching this on um, on YouTube, you get a breakdown of all your splits in terms of your runs and your stations. So that's really good. Good thing about it, you can identify all of the areas that you're weaker at. You can look at the times where you've lost time, then the stations you've lost time, the runs you've lost time, uh, and kind of pick and see which areas you need to work on. So in terms of the start off, when you go into the start line, Coming out of it, it's a big crowd, especially in the open. There's a lot of elbows getting thrown around. People are trying to get to the front. Um, so just expect that. Expect a little bit of a push and shove. Um, your first run, obviously, people go out flying out the blocks. I went out in 3 minutes 44, which wasn't super fast by any means compared to some people. But it was a pace that I know um, I could maintain and it wasn't too comfortable. wasn't too hard, sorry. Uh, so don't absolutely burn yourself out on the first lap unless you're a confident runner and you know you can do that. Um, because then you know you're going into the skier, which isn't a bad station to start off with. Uh, so 3 minutes 44 on there. Then the skier, I did it in 3 minutes 43. So skier, because I'm tall, I'm 6'5", it's one of my stronger areas. So I was first overall in the open on that. Um, so I came out that pretty fresh. I think I averaged um, on the skier about a 147, 148, 500-meter uh, pace. So not too bad. Run 2, pace dropped a little bit, 417. Um, so it wasn't too much of a bad run going into the sled push I think I was about third or fourth at this point did that in two minutes and seven seconds um, 15th overall on there then the third run four minutes 52 so you can see my runs are slowly st uh, stopping down coming out of that sled push your legs are heavy it does feel like you've got two packs of sand in your legs and you can't quite move but the best thing to do is just keep those legs going that first lap's going to be tough the rock zone's going to be tough but you'll find you gradually almost recover obviously if you've practiced it in training you'll kind of know that feeling after the sleds. Um, so if you haven't already practiced doing any sort of compromise running with the sleds or even just any sort of leg movement, um, definitely get some practice in because it'll hit you like a ton of bricks. Um, but just keep on, keep those legs moving. Going to the sled pull, I came second overall on that. Two minutes, 24 seconds. Um, big tip for this one, use the box. Make sure you're reaching forward. So the technique that I used was go to the front, I'll go the rope between my legs, right at the front of the box, reach as far forward as you can. Big almost deadlift, so it's almost like a deadlift sort of high pull. Pull backwards, use the um, the full length of the box, keep stepping backwards, and pull the rope as you're stepping backwards. Obviously, not everybody might not have the strength for that, but if you are someone who's quite strong, make sure you're almost moving like, like you're doing a deadlift and pulling at the same time to get as much pull as possible. 
obviously when you go to the pro weights i've seen a lot of the pros literally are just deadlifting it and dragging it and pulling because the weight's that heavy you can't almost pull with your arms um so this is just a technique to whatever your strengths are for me i went to the front of the box pull and then also use my arms to pull backwards uh, and i used the walk across as a little bit of recovery so the first one i think i steadily jogged across from one side to the other then after that i just started walking just to get my breathing so the quality of the pulls was better um rather than trying to rush it too much uh, coming out of that one, run was 4 minutes 49. So again, my runs aren't great. Running is my weakness by far. I've never been a runner. Um, it's something that I really want to get better at. And uh, Then moving on to my weakest station, the 80 meter baby bro jump. So I did that in 3 minutes 43, came 89th uh, out of that one. I did the hands down, baby down, chest to floor, and then right foot forward, left foot forward, then jump. Um, some people, if, if you're hunting McIntyre, you can just jump through it. Uh, for most people, you're not going to be able to do that. I was watching John Wynn, who won the um, the actual men's pro. He was dropping onto his knee, then stepping up. Sorry, he was going onto his knee, then stepping up. Um, so just have a, have a look and practice certain techniques beforehand and see what's most efficient. Maybe time yourself and see which, which technique works the best. Um, moving on after that was obviously another run. I was 5 minutes 11, so my runs are slowing down now. Um, really starting to feel that the runs were a lot harder than anything I've done in training. Obviously, a lot of times I've been simulating it on a treadmill. Treadmill pacing is completely different to your pacing when you're actually running out there. Um, so just be mindful of that. Don't expect to be doing, so I was doing like four minute kilometers on the treadmill when I'm, I'm actually doing close to five minutes on here. Um, next one was the row. So I did that in five minutes, 56. Uh, five minutes, 56, three minutes, 56. So I came first on that one. Um, again, I'm quite confident on, on the row. Use that as a little bit of recovery. You don't want to push yourself too much because you've just came out of the baby row drums, which is quite tough. You're at the halfway mark. Get that as a little bit of recovery because after the farmer's carry, you've got the two really tough stations, the lunges and the wall balls. And obviously, your energy levels are going to be a lot lower at this point. Um, so I use that as a little bit of a recovery. Then it was the run that I messed up on. don't want to talk about it too much, but I did that in 6 minutes 25. So that absolutely killed me. Um, then farmer's carry, 1 minute 37. Um... 14th overall on that one just get the weights um, make sure you use some chalk definitely use some chalk because your hands are going to be sweaty you want to maximize that grip um, if you want to do it unbroken use that chalk and um, grab the weights obviously you know what pace you can do with that if you can run with it perfect keep them arms locked in squeeze your triceps pin those arms close to your body so the kettlebells aren't swinging around um, and get a good pace going if you need to break it do it but obviously if you if you can practice your grip strength in training so you can just do that unbroken uh, and get it in under like a minute 30. After that, obviously, that wasn't a bad station, so my runs went back up to 4 minutes 38 on the next one. And then on the sandbag, lunge, sandbag, lung, the sandbag lunges, 2 minutes 58, um, came third overall on that one. Little tip for this one, make sure you're taking a little bit of a, a step in between, unless, again, you're hunting McIntyre and you can just power straight through. Uh, so lunge, put your foot down for one second, lunge, even if it's just your toe, then lunge that little bit of a rest will definitely save your legs a tiny bit if you try and go continuous you'll find your quads will burn out you'll start cramping uh, i start to get a little bit of cramp in my less left kind of lateral quad towards the end uh, but nice big long strides and also make sure when you get to the line don't try and overstride too soon to get across the line because i tried to do that and i didn't quite cross the line on the last lunge and the woman said do one more so i pretty much ended up doing like an extra meter of lunges when i didn't really need to um, so don't force big strides unless you know you're definitely going to make it towards the end um, give yourself 5-10 seconds once you get to the past the first 40 meter sorry the first 50 meters of lunges where you have that kind of corner um, I know I'm pretty sure most uh, high rock stations now have a little bit of a corner where you can have a rest take 5 seconds compose yourself then go again um, if you need it if you feel good just go for it nothing's going to feel good in high rocks what am I on about everything absolutely hurts it's just it's just constant pain for like 60-70 minutes um, so yeah, just embrace the pain maybe. Then last run was really slow, 5 minutes and 10 seconds. Obviously your legs are super heavy after the lunges, just keep them going. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention was the water stations. If you do have water, if you can get away with not having water, if you're used to training the heat and used to train with not have water, perfect, you're not wasting time. Um, but I just literally just grabbed like three cups at once and just chucked them on my face and hoped that some water went in my mouth. Um, and I ended up just having water all the down my body. But it's ways of cooling you down. Obviously, I was in a, on a, in a hot country, so I wasn't used to the heat. So I was just using that as much as I can. Um, I swear someone was sick on one of the corners as well, on the out zone of the, the high rocks um, in Malaga. So just be careful of any sick if there is any as well. Um, but yeah, use water stations if you need them. Just don't take big gulps, just little bits at a time. Then onto the wall balls. Um, 
tip for this, I wouldn't really say pace yourself on that last run going into the warbles. Get into that mindset that, you know what, this is going to absolutely kill no matter what. So I might as well go into the wall balls at a good pace. Um, I maybe slowed down a little bit too much because I was apprehensive. I know what it's like mentally, knowing that you've got 100 wall balls to do. You can, I always get a little bit anxious and nervous knowing that I've got, I've got 100 wall balls to do. It's the worst station. It's going to hurt so much. But you know what, you just got to embrace it and just get straight into it. Get the job done. Um, don't think about the pain that you're going to go through too much. When you get to the wall balls, Pick the ball up, compose yourself, because what I did in Glasgow in the doubles was I threw the ball first, because I just had no composure at all. I went straight in, picked the ball up, I threw the ball first without squatting, which is a stupid, it, it, really stupid thing to do. Um, but make sure, compose yourself, breathe, then go into it. Um, just get the timing, get used to what sort of setup the wobbles are. I know they're different in different countries. In Spain, in Malaga, they had quite a wobbly sort of... Um, um, board a target to aim towards so just get used to it get your position because for the first rep you might start too close you might start too far away that first rebound off the wall balls is going to be a time for you to judge and kind of see how far away you need to be so just don't just be careful that you don't smack yourself in the, in the face straight away uh, with the wall balls just make sure you're using a little bit of leg drive to drive up as well don't just burn out your shoulders don't squat stand up then throw it make sure you're using a little bit of leg drive to push up um, I kind of alternated, so for the first 50-ish wall balls, I used a little bit of leg drive, then my legs really started to burn out, but lucky for myself, because um, I'm a little bit taller and it was six kilograms, so my upper body is quite strong, I ended up just kind of using my upper body a little bit more to give my legs a bit of a break. Um, always keep speaking to the judge just to know how many reps you want, because I thought I was on 50 when actually I was on 40 at one point, so yeah, this, this is my counting, I'm doing the areas I need to work on, so always just keep speaking to the judge and he'll tell you. Um, even if you're a Brit in a foreign country, they are quite good at communicating with you um, and just keep pushing. It's going to hurt. Just keep on counting counting backwards. Once you get the 50, break it up into sets of five in your head or sets of 10 in your head. That makes it mentally a little bit easier. Um, you just got to push. But like I said, the wall balls were horrendous. And then you just stumbled across the line and I absolutely collapsed. I was in agony after it. Um, way worse than any simulation I've done. My time was worse than any simulation I've done, but obviously it's just a new experience and you don't know how um how well you're going to do in in the actual race until you actually do one um so overall like i said one hour eight minutes ten seconds extra lap which was annoying run total time uh 39 minutes and two seconds not great um i came 308th overall on that which is really bad uh, and then rock zone time um was four minutes 40 which is 191st so my rock zone time was quite slow um, so it's an area I obviously need to work on is my transition. So like I said, um, for the first high rocks, first tip I would say is enjoy it. Don't put too much pressure on yourself, which I did, um, and just kind of go into it. Obviously prep the way that you should really, that you, you know works um, in terms of nutrition and stuff, which I'm obviously going to dive into. Um, but it's a learning curve. The first one is about identifying your weaknesses, the areas that you need to work on, um, and don't stress too much about tactics and stuff because you'll end up figuring it out after that first high rock so the first high rocks is a learning curve and um, then obviously you can look back through your times and identify your weaknesses uh, now some of the other things that i have learned in high rocks um nutrition i don't know why i paused those there nutrition nutrition is a big thing so obviously because it was in a different country um it's almost like a, it was almost like a little bit of a holiday and i needed to try and change my mindset a little bit better from the day before that I wasn't on holiday. So obviously we flew on the Friday, I was competing on the Saturday. Didn't eat anything until I got there, which is a smart idea if you're flying the day before. Try not to eat a big breakfast at the airport because your body doesn't digest food very well um, when we were on airplane. So I just fasted until we got to Malaga. Um, I had like a protein flapjack that I had in my bag at the airport, um, which was about 11 o'clock. Then we went to the hotel. The food that I chose, because I was starving, I didn't really make good choices with food nutrition wise the day before. Uh, that was one thing that massively let me down. So I ended up having a like a chicken, was a club sandwich with chips and some fruit, which wasn't very good. It's heavy. Um, you want to stick to meals that you've been having in the UK or wherever, even if you're a company in the UK, to stick to the meals that you've always been having because um, your body, you first of all, know that it's going to digest nice and easy and your body knows what you're having rather than having something that's a little bit out of your... Um, out of your usual routine and obviously you don't want anything so high in fat like I did which was a little bit a little bit too greasy so that was my own fault you want to keep foods that are easily going to be digestible carbohydrates some nice simple carbohydrate source pasta potatoes oats rice um, bread bagels whatever sits with you 
Uh, protein sources, keep them nice and lean. You don't want too much fat in your system. Fat slows the rate of absorption and digestion down. Um, if you're going to have a little bit of fat, make it something that's good quality, uh, like from an oily fish, like from avocado, some nuts, whatever sits well with you. Um, so 85% dark chocolate, things that are going to work well. Uh, and obviously make sure that you're getting enough carbs in the day before and not too much fat. Then in the evening meal, I messed up because we went to a restaurant that didn't have any English on the menu. So make sure if you are taking high rocks a little bit more serious that you plan your meals beforehand, plan the restaurants you're going to go to so you know what's on the menu and you know what you're having. We went to a restaurant, which is great, um, but obviously, like I said, there was no English on the menu. I didn't know what to choose. I ended up pan panicking because I was hungry. Uh, I ordered a steak, which is the complete wrong thing to do the day before high rocks because I felt that steak the whole way around. Um, so yeah, don't get a steak. I got steak and spag ball, so wasn't it wasn't the best choices for me. I ended up having ice cream for dessert, so I was in that sort of holiday mindset too soon. Treat your day before as if you're back home in the UK um, or whichever country you're you're from originally, and just yeah, treat it to have the, eat the same foods that you would normally be having. And mm. uh, that would be tip number one. Um, next one, sleep. <laughs> Well, I was staring and sharing a room with my dad and he was snoring like, man, if anybody was following me on Instagram, I put a story on of my dad snoring. Uh, so make sure you, your hotel, whichever, you, wherever you're staying, has got a decent bed. Uh, make sure if you're maybe staying next to a main road, pack yourself some earplugs or something. I'm a big fan of earplugs, eye masks, nasal strips, mouth tape, all that stuff to help with your sleep quality uh, with nasal breathing and all that. So make sure you plan your sleep. If you know you're going to be near a road, bring the earplugs. Um, if you know you're staying with someone who snores a lot, Either get some earplugs or book an extra room, which I'll definitely be doing next time. I ended up sleeping in the bath on the, the second night, which wasn't ideal. So cheers, Dad. Thanks. Thanks for that one. Uh, great support and all. But uh, yeah, yeah, just plan your sleep. Uh, next thing is, I mentioned before, everything's going to feel heavier. So just expect that into the race. Yeah, just things are going to feel a lot, lot worse than planned. So don't stress about it. Just keep on getting through it. Um, and you will get them little breaks on the row the, um, and the farmers carrying stuff as well, which will help. Um Training wise, make sure you do something the day before, especially if you're flying. If you're flying in on the Friday to race on a Saturday, definitely do something to get your legs going. I did a little bit of a jog and a stretch because um, I felt my legs felt really heavy, like really watery. Um, so doing that jog and stuff really did help. I did feel really good after that. Um, and make sure that you're, you're not completely resting a few days beforehand. In terms of my taper, um, what I did, I trained Monday and Tuesday at a little bit less intensity. I was following the levels app. Uh, Wednesday I went for a steady run Thursday was a complete rest day apart from a bit of mobility and then Friday I did a little bit of a jog just a tiny bit of a jog and a stretch um, and that worked quite well for me doing that little bit the day before and um, the only thing was which I'm going to touch on in a second was not completely switching off that week before the race I remember I was it was the week beforehand I was very burnt out I was quite tired and um, the week beforehand so maybe I peaked too soon maybe I was pushing myself too much doing too too much too soon in terms of my training beforehand. So when I knew that I was onto my taper in my peak week, I almost switched off because I thought all the work was done and this week was just a rest week going into the race. So my mindset wasn't 100% great going into that, that race. I was a little bit sloppy. Um, so don't let your mindset slip. Just because it's the lead up to the race week doesn't mean that you want to completely rest and switch off. You still want to go with a lot of intensity with all your sessions that you're doing. It's just dropping that volume down and being managing your recovery a little bit more. Um, but definitely when it comes to the Thursday, Friday, leading up to the Saturday race, you just want to back off a little bit more. But get your legs moving on the Friday. Um, but talking about overtraining, make sure you're taking deloads within your training program probably every four to five weeks, which I think was one of the reasons why I burnt out leading up to the race. I wanted to do so much training. I really wanted to push myself because uh, I knew I was flying to a different company. My dad was going out and it was my first high rocks. Um, I got into that mindset. like I just need to do everything, everything I possibly can. Uh, make sure you're sticking to a good training program. Make sure you're taking your rest days, making sure you're focusing on your recovery, your sleep, your nutrition, your soreness, your ice baths, your foam rolling, mobility, and take them seriously and put little deloads in because if you've got a similar mindset to me when it comes to training, you want to go 100% into it all or nothing, super high intensity, put everything into it. If you're not getting your deload on your rest days, you're not going to be able to put that 100% effort in every single day. You're not going to be able to recover from it and that 100% effort isn't actually going to be 100%. It's probably going to be more like 80% because you're not recovered enough. Um, so make sure you take your rest days and have a plan which has its intense days, has its more aerobic zone two recovery days, and obviously has its rest days as well. So a proper periodized program will help with that. Um, yeah, so I ended up burning out like four weeks out 
from the race. I think, I don't know if it was COVID, but I ended up getting very unwell for a few days. I had to take three days off just purely because I think I was burnt out way too soon. I know the week prior to that, I had a 10K time trial, which absolutely wrote me off. Um, and then I had a really intense session on the Wednesday and I think I did a high rock sim on the Friday. So my sessions just were, were, were too intense. I was pushing it too much. Um, so yeah, just a lesson learned. That's, 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 that's all it is. Um, and like I mentioned, the final, well, the first thing that I said was just enjoy the experience. High rocks is an amazing sport. The feeling afterwards is amazing. The whole setup of everything is brilliant. Um, I can see the sport really, really growing. So if it's your first high rocks, just enjoy it. Obviously work really hard leading up to it. And um, you'll learn a lot from that first experience, from your training, from the, the, the nutrition setup, from the lead up to the race, from what to do on race day, from your split times, your, your running times, um, and kind of how you feel afterwards. You're gonna feel horrendous, but amazing. Afterwards, you're gonna be absolutely knackered. Your adrenaline's gonna be super high. You're gonna feel anxious as anything when they play that start music at the start line. Um, your heart's gonna be going, but just enjoy the experience and learn from there. Uh, and then you'll be so eager. I'm so keen to get back out there and do another solo. Um, but we've got Manchester in five weeks' time. World Championships, me and Marcus are going to be competing in the doubles. So really looking forward to that. That'll be a fun weekend. Um, so I've learned my lessons nutrition-wise beforehand. Um, but make sure you celebrate yourself afterwards because if you've, you've been training for 16 weeks, 12 weeks, whatever it's been leading up to a race, make sure you celebrate your achievements um, because you've worked really hard and you've just done something amazing, which is one of the most brutal workouts that you could possibly do, which is a high rocks. Um, but yeah. I feel like I've rambled absolutely loads in this video. Hopefully, you've kind of picked up some tips and tricks from my experience. Um, one thing that I did forget to mention, make sure you look at the board and count your laps properly. Um, obviously, if you're doing something like a three-lapper, which Malaga was, make sure you look at the board because the board, board does really help. I didn't think it was going to help me out as much, but once I made that mistake of doing too many laps, I was constantly looking at the board. And if you, you do have enough time to look, see your name, see how many laps you do, you're doing uh, or you've done and where you need to be next. Um, so make sure you look at the board. So that was the biggest, biggest takeaway for me. Um, but yeah, enjoy the experience. Thank you very much for listening to me ramble for the last half an hour or whatever it's been. Um, if anybody is interested in coaching, whether it is for high rocks or if it is just for general strength and conditioning, getting in shape, and obviously holidays are coming up, summer's coming up. I've got a few online coach spaces left. Uh, one on one personal training is very limited at the minute if you're in Newcastle, but still drop me a message anyway. I'll be happy to help someone out. Um, Instagram, all the links and everything are going to be down below. And um, this podcast is going to be timestamped, so hopefully you can just skip back to the bits that um, maybe you want to, to, to listen to certain areas and any tips and stuff uh, that you want to recap over. Um, as always, share the podcast, share the YouTube if you can, if you really enjoyed it. If you didn't, message me and tell me what you didn't like about it. Uh, I'm always up for con constructive criticism. And if anybody's at High Rocks Manchester, be good to meet up. If anybody's going, drop me a message. Um, I'm always open to saying hello to people and just chatting about things, yeah. But yeah, we'll see you in the next video. See you in the next podcast. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Over and out.